Uh, man, it's so good to see you all today. I'm going to talk to you guys about three things. Three things. I'm going to talk to you about peace with God. I'm going to talk to you about hope. And I'm going to talk to you about rejoicing in the Lord. And here's the verse. Here's the verse I'm going to, I'm going to talk to you about today. It's Romans chapter 5, verses 5 through 11. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though, though perhaps for a good person one would dare even to die. But God shows his love for us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since, therefore, we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. For if while we are enemies, we are reconciled to God by the death of his Son. Much more, now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. More than that, we also rejoice in God, through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Amen. I want to I want to I want to uh, open up in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for the for these uh, words of encouragement, this these words of faith. Lord, I, I I want us to all be strengthened in our faith, so that we can have a closer walk with you, that we can have victory in Jesus, knowing that we can we can put our our doubts behind, we can put our our shame behind, and, and we can put our faith and trust in you. And it's in Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, there's a, first, there's a few reasons why I, I chose this passage today. One, it's in one of my favorite books, the book of Romans. And it's, its main passage is about justification by faith. It's, it's main verse. It's it's Verse, it's topical verse throughout the whole book. You can, you'll see this over and over and over again. Is for I am not ashamed of the gospel. For it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith for faith. As is written, the righteous shall live by faith. And that's the main that's the main theme verse for the whole book. And it's, it's it's organized in a way to show how we are saved by uh, through faith in Jesus Christ. That we're not saved by works, we're not saved by anything we do, we're saved by faith in Jesus Christ. The passage before this, in chapter 4, talks about Abraham. How he is the model of faith. How he is the father of our faith. And he wasn't, he wasn't justified by doing good works. No, he was, he was a hundred-year-old man with a ninety-year-old wife. And, and I, I don't know. Some of you might be reaching that age. Some of you might. That's like that's still uh, twenty uh, to uh, ten, twenty, thirty years away. But that, that's how old Abraham was. This is when he started his ministry, and he. Believed in God's promises for him that he would have a son, that he would be heir of those promises. And it says just before our passage here that it says that is why his faith was counted to him as righteousness. But the words that was counted to him were not written for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be counted to us who believe in him, who raised from the dead Jesus our Lord who was delivered up for our trespasses and raised for our justification. That's why it says in our passage, therefore, every time you read the Bible, you want to ask the, 
you want to ask this question. What is the therefore, therefore? Well, that's what the therefore is there for. We are saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. Okay. And it says, therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> through Him we have obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand and we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Okay, this is a really, really packed passage here. But I just, I, I want to explain it to you really, really quick. Okay. Okay, since we have been justified by faith, we are were, we were at peace with God. First, we are enmity with God. You know, Romans 3.23, it, it says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So we, we were born separated from God. We were born sinners. We were born doing things that are rotten and dirty and things that aren't pleasing to Him. We were born in enmity with Him, but because of what Jesus did on the cross when He died for our sins, when He took the punishment that we deserve, we have been brought with peace with God. So we have peace with God and through him, we have obtained access by faith and hope into this grace in which we stand. If, uh, through him, we have obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand. We rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. We hope that we will see God's glory. Now, God's glory is talked about a few times in the Bible. You know, we originally got to see the glory of God when, when, when God walked with Adam and Eve in the, in the garden when, when, when we were at peace with him. And after that peace was broken, we, the, the glory of God isn't something we looked for. We, we were looking for the wrath of God. But, you see, what, what God did, he, he, he often would show His glory to people who had faith in Him, who, who trusted and were called according to His purpose. You know, one of my favorite songs is Rock of Ages. Cut, cut. But for me, let me hide myself in thee. Let the water and the blood from thy wounded side which flow. Be of sin, the devil, pure of wrath, make me pure. You see, that passage is talking about an old, that song is talking about an old passage in the book of Exodus, where, where Moses was on the mount, was on Mount Sinai, and he was receiving the, the law of God. He was receiving the Ten Commandments, the law of God. And, it, and Israel's promises of, of, the, of the old covenant. And he asked God, Lord, show me your glory. Show me your glory. And he said, Moses, you can't see my glory. You can't see my face. If you were looking at my face, you would die. But, it, but I'm going to hide you in this rock. I'm going to put my hand over you so when I pass by you, you will see my backside of my glory. God showed himself in his glory in the Shekinah glory cloud over the, over the tent of meeting where him and Moses would meet. God would talk to Moses. We see the glory of God in the, in the book of Isaiah where Isaiah is in the temple and he sees us. He sees God and he, he's in the temple and he's surrounded by cherubim. It's, it's amazing. And this glory of God. They, they see him. And, and, and Moses, not Moses. Isaiah is saying, man, I'm a man of unclean lips. He sees the train of his glory. fills the whole temple. And he's, he's saying, I'm a man of unclean lips. And God cleanses his lips. So we have hope in the glory of God. Now, that, now it seems right here. Where it kind of gives an interjection about suffering in our passage. Right, right here in Romans 5. It says... Not only that we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God, but not only that we rejoice in our sufferings. Now I want to tell you something. Suffering in our culture, in our day and age, equals shame. You don't want to suffer. You don't want to suffer. You don't want to be bullied by the kid at school. You don't want to, to, to have back pains. You don't want to be persecuted. But suffering equals shame in our culture. We, we, we tend to look down on ourselves because we suffer. But that's not how suffering works in the Christian life. That's not how suffering works in the Bible. Because suffering produces endurance. Endurance produces character. And character produces hope. 
And we and hope does not put us to shame because God's love is poured out into our hearts. Hmm. When when we look at at suffering, when we look at we see we, we've looked at the faith, we've looked at the hope of the glory of God. How do we know that we have this love that God's talked to us about? How do we know that our suffering will end up in, in His glory? How can we rejoice in the hope and glory of God? And He answers it with the passage that we met that you know I memorized when I was a Sunday school kid. And it was, for while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. He talks about this three times, emphasizing the importance of Jesus' death, how paid for our sin, and that's how God shows his love for us. You know, when I was struggling with my faith as a new believer, I went to this passage, and I was like, how could God love me? I'm a wretched, horrible sinner. And I looked at this passage, and said, while we were still weak at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. And it you know, says again in, in verse Verse 9, since therefore we have been now been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. And if while we were still enemies, we are reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more now that we are reconciled, now that we are made right with God, shall we be saved by his life. That's amazing. That's amazing. That's how we know God loves us. That's how we know we can hope in the glory of God. And that's why this last verse is so important in this passage. More than that, we, can, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. We know that God loves us. We know we can be saved. We know that we are made right with God by the death of Jesus Christ. Because when we were his enemies, when we were weak, when we were sinners, Jesus died for us. And we have been made right by grace through faith with him. And we can rejoice. So, I don't know what life is like for you. I don't know all your walks, I don't know anything. But I know this, as you're going about your day, as you're suffering, as, 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 you're, as you're going through life, you can rejoice in Jesus Christ that He died on the cross for you, and that He rose from the dead, and you get to see the glory of God. You will one day be resurrected. You will one day see the face of Jesus Christ. You will see His, 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 his magnificence, his, his white hair, His his flowing white robe. You'll see him in all his glory. And you'll get to live a wonderful life without pain, without suffering. You'll be able to enjoy the glory of God. And that's how I want to end my message for you today. I want you to rejoice in the glory of God through faith, you can be assured, assured of this hope. Let's, let's close in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, that we have been made right with you. Anyone who repents of their sin and puts their faith and trust in you have, is made right with you and we know that we can we can have the have, we can see your glory. Help us to live right now in anticipation and expectation to see your glory. Everyone must faith and trust in you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.